Hey, everybody give up another bopper. Uh, we had this gun show in California. So I just want to show y'all, you know, we're going to do a nice little segue. You know, you guys like COD. So now we're going to segue into, you know, real life guns and real life gun shows. Uh, I'm just going to be honest. Gun shows over the years have slight way fallen off due to the law changes. But, you know, every once in a while you'll get a good gun show. So hopefully this is kind of my first time going to the, the people who's hosting this gun show. This is my first time going to it. So it should be it should be interesting. But like I said, I've been to plenty of gun shows in different states and all that. So yeah, we're gonna see. Hopefully this one's cranking. Hopefully this one's cranking. <laughs> So, all right, here's the entrance of it. You know, it's got a little hand press patty. We got over here, we got the nice little kettle corn. I'm not really a huge fan of kettle corn. No, don't flame me, but I'm not really a huge fan of kettle corn. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. What manufacturer is this? Uh, those are 308. No, what manufacturer? Anderson Arms. All of them are Anderson? Anderson, yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Any questions? For the eye candy? Yeah. It's a black powder one, isn't it? It, yeah, black, well, these are all black powder. This is black powder. These three are black powder. Sorry, black powder? Yeah. Yeah. And originally. Yeah, that looks good. You might want to hear this, too. Oh, I'm listening. This has a lot of stuff in here that you probably don't want. So they had a family reunion, and I'm, I'm about five years older than this So I was in the Marines at the time, and I was home on leave, and they had a family reunion. That that little fucker, 15 years old, wouldn't even talk to the poor part of the family. Anyway, this, if I can find it. Well, okay, so talk to me about the 224 So you said in that side. I have it. Which one would you, which one would you prefer out of that or the 308 or 65 could get? Well, I mean, it depends on what you want to use it for. Mm. Um, if you just want hard hitting stuff, I mean, the 308 is going to be the best of the three. Mm. But if you're looking for long distance with some hard hit, I can't, I don't remember who I said it to. Uh, then a 6.5 Creedmoor. Mm. But if you're more into long distance shooting and wanting to get the perfect shot, 
without necessarily looking for the hardest hitting caliber, 224 Valkyrie has the best ballistics of any cartridge that I know of. So okay, so let's get more into the ballistics. So, so for someone that doesn't know, what would ballistics mean? Like it means flatter, okay, and less windage affected by wind. Mm -hmm. So if you want to, you know, like you're in a shooting contest or right. something, mm -hmm. and you want to be able to reach out further than anybody else, or try to get the perfect shot at way out below, a, out beyond a thousand yards. Mm -hmm. 224 Valkyrie is a flash, the least amount of drop, and the least amount of going this way. So, that's, so I'm curious about that. So the 224 Valkyrie would be kind of be related to like the 556 in a way? It's, 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 the, so same, it's, been the, same it's about the same size, mm -hmm. but, but the way the projectile or the bullet is designed, mm -hmm. and the way it's put into the casing, and the powder that's gunpowder that's used determines the ballistics, which means how flat it will be when it goes out further and further. Mm -hmm. How long is it a supersonic mm -hmm. rather than subsonic? Right. So that's what ballistics means. Mm -hmm. So would a, does the five six do more uh, damage than a two two four? No, because okay. five five six is the same as a two two three. Right. Two two three and two two four are pretty similar. Right. Except for the actual design of the bullet and how it sits inside the cartridge and what kind of gunpowder and how much gunpowder it uses. So all those things affects the physics or the performance of the bullet once it leaves the barrel. Okay. So um so, would you, so you know how different rounds, right? Basically, the better the barrel or the longer the barrel, that's how you get the peak performance. So I would say the 224 two, 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 Valkyrie best barrel will be, if that makes sense. It's like, would it have better ballistics out of a 20 or an 18 or 16? Or uh, well, with the 224, uh, I believe the ideal length is going to be about uh, 24 inches. Mm. That's a long board. Yeah, <laughs> it's not that really that long. I mean, if you... <laughs> Shot long distance, mm -hmm. I have. I've commonly used 26, 27 inches when I was shooting a thousand yards. Mm -hmm. Using 300 wind mag, I was using a, I think a 26 inch uh, barrel mm -hmm. in a uh, Saco TRG 42, mm -hmm. which is a rifle that's used by uh, the Finnish military. It's a military rifle, mm -hmm. and uh, so you know, if you want long distance performance. Generally, the longer the barrel, the faster the velocity is of the projectile once it leaves the barrel. So with 300 blackout, though, you wouldn't put that longer barrel down a blackout, right? Well, 300 blackout mm -hmm. reaches full velocity after after about seven and a half, eight inches. Mm -hmm. That's for short distance. Right. For within 300 yards or less. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking a different... I know we talk about different ball games, but I, totally. just, I just find that funny how just different rounds are, how they act, you know, like how different rounds are versus yeah. short barrel. There's rounds. very, very big differences. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Like with a 223 or a 556, mm -hmm. to get maximum velocity, you need a 20 inch barrel. Yeah. But you can get by with a 16 inch in the most circumstances. And some get by with a 14, you know, the military get by with a 14. Well, you can get by with a 10 and a half inch or lose. 25% of your velocity, mm -hmm. but you're going to do it for short distances for CQB. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's, that's crazy. So when it comes to building the ARs, are the 762 harder to build? Or are they pretty much the same as the regular AR-15? Um, there are differences in the way the lowers are constructed. Mm -hmm. And uh, when it comes to... Do you, you haven't built your own yet, have you? Uh, I, put, I, I haven't... Most I've done is put stuff together, but when it comes to actually messing with the internals and putting stuff in there, I haven't got that deep into it. Okay, well, the stocks and well, what what, what one finds is that if you want to use upgraded parts, if you want to use fancier stuff, and you will find that you're buying parts from different manufacturers mm -hmm. and you're trying to put it into different lowers made by different manufacturers and they don't always fit things right so you have they don't always fit so you have to fit them you have to change things mm -hmm. you know grind things down 
drill holes, make them bigger. Uh, you you have to customize it. Mm -hmm. So it's not if you're just using plain old mill spec parts. Very simple. It's faster. But you're going to get a plain Jane gun mm -hmm. all the time. But you want to get something that looks cooler, nicer. You know, then you have to buy parts made by different manufacturers. Mm -hmm. And then the term mill spec almost goes out the window because they all make them different. All you need something is a fraction of an inch off, and and then you have to start working with it mm -hmm. as a gunsmith almost, mm -hmm. and making it fit and work. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you just have you can't do it. You have to use a different part from a different manufacturer. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you can't put it together. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel about uh, the 545? Do you like that 545? Which one? 545 by 39. Do you like that round? 555 five, 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 no, 545. Five, 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 is that the, the 545? Five, that's the, uh, I think, the Russian one. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I haven't played with it. The only Russian round that I know of is the 76239 using an IK, or the 9 by 39 which almost no one knows, you know about. knows about. Yeah, that's a, that's a really odd one. You know about yeah. 9 by 39 Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's see it. What, what do you know about Well, what I do know... No, what do you... Yeah, what do you what know? What I do know is, please correct me if I'm wrong, I know you will, that it's kind of in the 300 Blackout family. Like, it's kind of used for the close uh, QBZ. Close for combat. That's pretty much what I know about it. But, you know, the rest of they kind of have that kind of around on the wrap. So, because the guns that, that it shoots out of, we don't really... I have never really seen one in person. Well, the, the Russian version of the gun, which is what it was made for, mm -hmm. If you can ever find it in the United States, it will cost you ten thousand dollars. That's not bad for that gun. Right? I don't know, ten thousand dollars. <laughs> but you think it'll be more because since those guns are limited, you know what I'm saying? Ten thousand dollars is a lot of money to me. But I built an I built one in an AR platform. Mm -hmm. I have one. How 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 would you define that? Do you like that round? It's a fantastic round. Yeah. That round is a bivalent round. Mm -hmm. That's the round that the that the Department of Defense used as the model for the new 8.6 uh, to 51, otherwise known as the Sig Theory 277. I was going to ask you about that next. I was like, yeah. And that's what, because it's a bivalent round, and it's designed for penetration of body armor of, of, of our Chinese and Russian enemies. How you feel about that round? Because I don't know how long I don't know how it's gonna do on uh, on a mass production. We're getting enough troops. How do you think it's gonna do? Well, the problem is because I think it's gonna eat up barrels because that thing's coming out some time. Well, the problem is gonna be it's a heavy gun, mm -hmm. and how many soldiers are gonna be carrying a gun that weighs 16 pounds without ammunition, mm -hmm. without the uh, rangefinder scope yep. on it, mm -hmm. which is an eleven thousand dollar scope. Mm -hmm. Custom made by Vortex mm -hmm. with a built up computer. Is that AK? Everything's okay. Yeah, I've seen that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Oh, is that that one deeds thing? I see. You know what I, you know I got to ask you next, right? The what? You know what I got to ask you next, right? What? You an AK guy or you an AR guy? Uh, that's... Mm -hmm. It's okay to take your time, you know? You can get tricky. You can start okay, whole so reliability uh, all day. Okay. Okay? I see you on that Precision, you can't, you can't beat that. You can't... These can get pretty precise too, depending it's, on it's, 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 the, To make this as precise as that out of the box, that's going to destroy this no matter what. But... But the, to make this as precise as possible, you have to change a few things out because this is your only sight right here. So you would have to change out this to put a, a, a Picatinny rail, or they would put them, they have them mounted on the side here. Because that's the only shitty thing about the AK, is because you have to put a side mount here that puts the rail up over it. So then your your red dot sits high as fuck already. So because you have your Picatinny rear, and then your red dot will sit up here. So what I'm doing right now is I'm. Well, that's 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 even with the space or without the space. You know, some Hey yeah. Have a good one. So, so say if you don't put so say if you don't put the spacer on there, it will still kind of be somewhat flat, right? Not no, because the rail because the rail sits about uh, half an inch over this. 
because it still allows you to pull the cam off. So what I'm doing right now is I'm manufacturing onto where the rail integrated onto the slide mm -hmm. so it fits flush. Mm -hmm. So you could even put a little RMR on this mm -hmm. and then do it. But but like I said though, I mean accuracy. So what do you think that would you say it's more of the gun or the round? Because you know the 7.62 the round could be. Yeah. The round dude is fucking twice the size, yeah. twice the power, mm -hmm. twice everything. Yeah. Dude, it's just a shrunken down 308. That's what this Pretty is. Pretty much. Pretty much, yeah. Pretty so much. then you look. Yeah, that's it. Oh, well, I didn't know that. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie. I like these. I, w I want to get my hands on the 74 though. Or, that's what I want to get my hands on. I've been looking for the 545. Yeah. 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 That's wrong. I don't know where I was going to camp for bikes camp. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully you guys learned something. Um, sometimes gun show could be weird about you recording, so you kind of have to ask. And if you ask, they're usually pretty cool about it sometimes. But it, I was actually surprised. I haven't seen ARs and AKs for a very long time. So, like, it was actually a surprise. It kind of gave me nostalgia for how gun shows used to be in California. A lot of the new gun laws and ammo laws really hurt at the gun shows in California. Usually they sell a lot of AR parts, magazines, AK magazines, you know, mill sharp gun parts, you know, special loaded ammo types and stuff like that. But the fact that they actually had, like, many gun stores in there, I was really surprised about that. That's the first I've seen in a very long, really long time. So if you've never been in a, to a gun show, I encourage that you go because it is a good experience. You do get to meet other people. You do get to ask questions that you might not find online. You get to get updated on gun laws and stuff that's going on in the gun community. So like I said, it's really, it's really a good place to go, you know. Plus two, you know, I encourage you to guys buy body armor. And if you can, have the extra money, buy ballistic helmets. Because like I said, all that stuff comes in handy. You just want to be prepared. You want to have all your bases covered. Because you just never know when you might be able to use it, you know? So again, stay tuned for more blogs. And I encourage gun ownership. You know, if you can, legally go out and buy a gun. Go out and shoot. Because, you know, you shoot them in a video game, you might as well just get familiar with them and love them in real life. You know what I'm saying? So again, uh... Like, comment, subscribe, and also comment your favorite gun or your favorite calibers you guys like to shoot. Or if you guys have questions on any guns or anything like that, let me know in the comments. And, you know, I'll do my best to help you because I do. I am pretty familiar with guns. So, again, just, just holler at me.